In this tutorial we're going to guide you through the process of creating the vectors for this decorative quatrefoil panel that you can see on the screen. As we work our way through what's a relatively complex layout we're going to use the layers function within the software to help keep our data organized and help us manage it. This will also be beneficial when we come to the toolpathing stage for this example which will be covered in the companion tutorial to this. Essentially this whole design is constructed from very simple shapes. We're going to create lots of circles and some rectangles and then use the tools within the software such as the offsetting, the welding, the subtract tool and also um, rely heavily on the mirroring tool in order to create all the symmetry. Ultimately you're going to end up with this set of vectors that you can see here. So let's go ahead and start a new copy of the software So let's click on the icon to create a new file and for this particular job setup we're going to go with 30 inches in X, 12 inches in Y, material Z0 on top of the block, thickness material 1. For the design portion of it we're going to set the datum to be in the centre here so you can see with the red square that X0, Y0 is in that position. Working in inches we're going to hit OK. So as we work through creating our vectors, we're going to keep the data organized on layers. This will also be helpful when we come to calculating the toolpaths um, in order to make it easier to select particular items. So the first thing I'm going to create is the basic outline of my part. So I'm going to come to the layer drop down here, click on the down arrow. I'm going to click on the layer one, the name of it, and I'm going to change the name and we'll call this outline shape, hit close. So that's the current layer, it's the only layer we have at the moment. I'm going to go ahead and draw a rectangle on that layer, so click on the icon to draw a rectangle and I'm going to put the anchor point for this in the center at x0, y0 and we're going to make this 27 inches wide and 10.5 inches high, hit create and close. Let's set up another new layer now for our next pieces of geometry. I'm going to click on this down arrow here, click on the button to add new layer and we'll call this top and bottom grooves. Hit close and I'm going to uh, create a rectangle and I want to snap to the corner of our larger rectangle here and so I'm going to click on the lower left hand corner for our anchor point going to snap here so when I get the, the uh, cursor changed down I'm going to click holding the mouse down I'm going to move the mouse over to this side snap to that corner and let go and you can see that's picked up the width of those two snap points and now when I specify the height it will go up from that lower left hand corner there so I'm putting a half inch value for the height hit create and close so there's my little rectangle I've just created now I'm going to select that and I'm going to ask the software to move that and I'm going to move that relative to its current position I'm going to go Y value 0.375 inches and hit apply so we're just moving that up by 3 eighths of an inch and now what I'd like to do is create a mirrored copy of that the part symmetrical top to bottom and so I'm going to come into the mirror selected objects and flip about job center, I want to flip about this line in the middle here I'm going to flip it vertically and make sure I've got create a mirrored copy checked so click on the icon to flip vertical there is the top um, part or the top uh, shape for our two grooves there so I'm happy with what we've created here what I'm going to do now is uh, make these layers invisible because we won't be needing this geometry for a little while and create another new layer for the next shape, shapes that we're going to make. So I'm going to click on the down arrow, I'm going to make each of these layers invisible by clicking on the light bulbs, click the button to add a new layer and I'm going to call this layer foils. Go ahead and hit close. Now I'm going to draw a circle which is at 0, 0 diameter of that circle is going to be 1.5 inches hit create and close. I'm just going to zoom in on the middle of the job here I could do that by rolling the mouse wheel um, to all, away from myself and we zoom out by rolling it towards yourself 
or I could use the zoom box so I can click on this and then just click and drag to zoom in on a particular area as well. To exit the zoom box function you'll need to come over and click on the selection mode arrow. So now I'm going to select this vector we've just created, I'm going to move the selected object and I want to move it relative to its current position and I want it to go uh, two thirds of an inch down. So I'm going to put minus two divided by three equals. So remember you hit the equals key on the keyboard when you're doing a calculation like that. You can hit apply and close. And now I'd like to make a little array of these circles. So I'm going to make a circular array. So we click on this icon here and I'm going to tell the software I want to rotate the copies. Number of items three, rotation center is zero, zero. So it's in the middle of the part here. And I want three items within a 360 degree circle. So make sure group copies is unchecked. We'll go ahead and hit copy, close. So we've created three separate objects there. And now with those selected, I'm just going to come straight across and click on the icon to weld those vectors together. So that's essentially just going to get rid of all the pieces where they overlap and just leave me with the silhouette of those three shapes. Now I'm going to offset that inwards. So I'm going to select the vector, come down to offset inwards by 0.25 inches. Create sharp corners is checked and hit offset close and then I'm going to create another circle so I'm going to click on the draw circle icon I'm going to snap to the middle of the part x0 y0 drag myself this circle and just so it overlaps with those corners a little bit then we'll come up here and edit the diameter of that to be 1.25 inches hit apply and close and now what I want to do is effectively weld these two shapes together. So I'm going to take the circle, shift and select this um, shape that we offset, come down here and again I'm going to choose the weld selected vectors option so I get the silhouette, the outer silhouette of those two shapes where they overlap. I click on that and there we can see we've created our nice little trifoil shape that we're going to use in our design. So let's zoom our work area to fit now come under under the 2D view control and click on the icon here and next I'm going to draw a circle click on the create circle icon and we're going to make this diameter 7.5 centered 0 0 hit create and close next I want to make a copy of this moved over 9 inches to the left so I'm going to select the circle I'm going to right mouse click here and we're going to come up into the menu and choose the option to copy. So that'll copy that to the clipboard. Now I'm going to move that shape so I'm going to click on the move selection we're going to go relative to its current position and the, we're going to go minus 9 along the x-axis, minus 9 inches from its current position hit apply and close and now what we can do is right mouse click and go to paste and that will paste back in the shape that we copied onto the clipboard. Now I'd like to take our trifoil shape and just align that with the top edge of these circles and so that it's equidistant between them. To help me do that I'm going to um, create a line which is snapped to the top two points of each of these circles. Come over, click on the draw polyline tool, and we'll just click and snap to there and then get to the snap point there so we can see the cursor change and click there right mouse click in order to accept that now what I'm going to do is select these two shapes and what I want to do is group these together if we don't group them together then when I align them it's going to treat them as two separate shapes to give you an example of what I mean if I take those two shapes hold the shift key and pick this line come into the align objects tool and say align inside edge it's going to align both of those edges to the top of that line there. And that's not what I want to happen. I want to keep them in the same position relative each other, uh, relative to each other, and then to a line. So I'm just going to hit Control Z on the keyboard to undo that. I'm going to deselect, just select these two objects here and hit G on the keyboard to group them together. So now they'll act as a single object and stay in their relative positions to each other. With that selected, I'm going to hold shift and select the line, and now I'm going to click on this icon again to align those uh, the top edge there, and then I'm going to come up and click on the icon to horizontally align that in the center of the line. 
So if we click on that, we can see that's positioned that where we wanted it to go. I'm going to go ahead and hit close. Now what I'd like to do is create some offset vectors that are going to give me all the geometry I need to create the little decorative v-carved elements that are going to be part of our design. So I'm going to take these two circles, select both of those, hold the shift key down, select the second one, come down to offset, say offset selected vectors, outwards, 3 eighths of an inch, 0.375, and I'm going to say offset, and then I'm going to take this vector here, um, so you can see at the moment this is grouped, so what I want to do is ungroup this now, I'm going to hit U on the keyboard so they become separate pieces again, and then I'm just going to deselect by clicking in the white area, select just this vector here, the outer of those two vectors, and do the same operation, offset it outwards by 3 eighths of an inch and hit offset and close. Now what I want to do is move some of these vectors onto another layer so it's a little easier for me to see what's going on and to maintain our organisation. So firstly I want that offset vector we just created there, then I'm going to hold shift down and select the two offset vectors we created for the circles, so the two outer circles as they are now, and then still holding shift I'm going to click on the line, I'm going to right mouse click and we're going to say move to layer and I want to create a new layer for these. So I'm going to click on the option for new layer, the software will ask me to give this layer a name, so I'm going to call this layer VCarve Shapes, and at the moment I'm going to make it invisible. So if I uncheck that, it'll be invisible and inactive, and that means when I hit OK, that those vectors I had selected will disappear because they've been moved onto an invisible layer. Now the benefit of doing that in this case is I can see exactly what's left and make sure I haven't moved anything I didn't mean to. Now I am actually going to go and work with that data we just moved though. So I'm going to come up to the layer, drop down here, going to switch off the foils or make that invisible and I'm going to switch on the V-carve shape layer and I'm going to click it to make it the active layer as well. You'll notice that uh, this name had gone red for a second there showing me that it was an active layer that was switched off. So now this is good, I have a hard uh, or a bold black name here showing me that that is the active layer so switched on and hit close. And what we're going to do with these vectors is trim them to leave us just with these little triangles and with this little area in here. Now I'm going to need an extra vector to help me with the trimming for this area in here. So I'm going to deselect those vectors by clicking on the white space, click on the draw polyline tool and I'm going to snap that to the right hand node of this circle and the left hand node of this circle and then right mouse click to accept that. So we've made that little straight line in there. Next we're going to go with the trimming tool, the scissors and click on that and I'm going to trim away the bits that I don't want. So starting up here we're going to get rid of the two outer parts of the circle there then I'm going to snip away these two bits of line and then I'm going to get rid of all the middle shapes that are left here. So I'm going to just snip my way through these to leave me with those three little shapes there which are made from those um, the overlapping parts of those offsets. Because we had the rejoin trimmed section selected, these should be shapes which are now uh, closed vectors. So if I hit close and select one of those, we can see that it has joined those together. Now I want to open up this bottom edge here because we're going to make a mirrored copy of this in a moment. So I'm going to select this vector here, I'm going to hit N on the keyboard to go to node editing. I'm going to hover over this area of the vector and I'm going to use the shortcut key D on the keyboard to delete that span. Okay, so then we're going to hit escape. We can see that we've opened up that edge which will be helpful to us in a moment. Now I'm going to come back and up to the layer manager and switch back on the foils layer, hit close here and I'm going to hit F on the keyboard to fit our um, job area into our window. What I want to do is take these vectors now that we've created here and I want to create a mirrored copy below. So I'm going to select all of those just dragging a box around them there and we're going to go to the mirror selected objects icon, I'm going to say flip about job center create a mirrored copy and flip vertical and that's just going to flip those down below there hit close and now what I want to do is take these two shapes in the middle the one that we just opened up there so I'm going to select one shift and select the other 
and I'm going to come over and use the join open vectors command so that's going to make one closed vector after I hit the join button here hit close so I've got another mirroring operation now and that's that I want to take these two vectors here and mirror those to the other side of the circle to help me to do that I'm going to create a mirror line snap to the circle I click on the draw polyline tool I'm going to snap to the top node of this circle snap to the bottom node of this circle right mouse click to accept that I'm going to then just deselect by clicking in the white space select this vector hold shift down and select this vector still holding shift on the keyboard I'm going to select my mirror line or what's going to become my mirror line I'm going to go into the mirror selected objects tool I'm going to switch off flip about job center and click the button to flip about line creating a mirrored copy so I'm going to click on that button there and that's just flip that using the line as a mirror hit close I'm going to select that line and I'm going to delete it now to create the symmetrical um, parts on the right hand side I can select everything except the middle circle so I'm going to drag a box down from the top left here click drag and make sure you completely enclose all those objects but not the middle circle they'll be selected we can come over to the mirror function click on mirror selected objects I want to flip about the job center create a mirrored copy I'm going to flip horizontal and hit close so there we've got our symmetry on the right hand side now I'm going to um, switch off some of the uh, data or simplify things a little by coming to the layer list we'll click on the drop down arrow going to undraw uh, the v-carve shape layer so we'll s click the light bulb to make that invisible you can see again the name's gone red because that is the active layer even though it's now undrawn so if I was to create something new now it would be put on that layer and it, that layer would suddenly become visible so if it goes red like this chances are you probably want to make sure you select a different layer so that you're not working on an invisible layer so I'm going to click on the foils layer that will become my active layer and I can hit close so now whatever data I create is going to be on this foils layer which is where I want it I'm going to select this circle in the middle and I'm going to click on the icon to zoom selected so we're going to zoom in on that area next I'm going to click on the selection mode uh, icon to enter exit the zoom function and I'm going to create two offsets of our circle so let's make sure it's selected come down to offset selected vectors I'm going to offset this inwards by 0.25 of an inch with the option to select new checked hit offset so that select new has made our newly offset vector become selected here and now I'm going to put in a value of 3 8 of an inch to offset that in further offset I'm going to hit close and I'm going to click in the white space to deselect those vectors make sure this is not selected because I'm going to create a new circle in a minute and if that was selected then what I would actually do is edit this circle here so make sure you have nothing selected click on the draw circle icon I'm going to put in a diameter of 3 and that's going to be at x0 y0 center hit create and close and now what I want to do is take this vector and align it to this vector so I'm going to hold shift down and select this then I'm going to go to the align selected objects I'm going to click on the icon to align the inside edge here hit close so now our smaller vector has been aligned to the top of our larger vector I'm going to click in the white space to deselect I'm going to reselect just the circle come back down to the array tool or the circular array tool here click on that and say that I want to rotate these around uh, x0 y0 I want to make four copies 360 degrees so four copies within a full circle click on the copy button hit close and now what I want to do is um, weld those together so with all those selected I'm going to come straight over to the weld function and click on that icon and you can see that's created this outer vector and this small inner one I'm going to select this one and I'm going to hit delete because I don't need that vector so that's the outer shape for our quatrefoil I'm going to select that and I'm now going to offset that to create the inner shape for it so I'm going to come down click on the offset selected vectors I want to go inwards by 0.25 of an inch and hit offset there make sure the create sharp offset corners is checked and hit close 
and now I'm going to deselect and click on the icon to draw a circle. I'm going to snap to the center x0, y0 and just click and drag this circle out till it comes just past those corners and then I'm going to just round that value up there to 3.75 inches hit apply and close with that selected I'm going to hold shift down and click on this inner offset shape here to add that to the selection and then I'm going to come over and click on the icon to weld the selected vectors together so now we've got the inner part for our quatrefoil shape now uh, I want to offset the outer um, shape we've got here so that again we can generate the geometry we need for the little v carve decorative elements that we're going to have in each of the corners inside of these larger circular pieces so with this vector selected I'm going to click on the offset selected vectors icon I'm going to go outwards 3 eighths of an inch 0.375 hit offset and close and that is currently selected because I had select new checked and I'm going to hold shift down and add to the selection this vector here so this is the vector that we originally created to align the top part of our quatrefoil so with these two vectors selected I'm going to right mouse click and ask the software to move those so move to layer and I'm going to move those onto the v-carve shape layer and they'll disappear because that layer is currently invisible Let's come over and click on the icon to zoom to fit. I'm going to click on the down arrow for the layers. I'm going to switch off the foils layer, switch on the v carve shape layer. I'm going to click on the name to make that the active layer and hit close. And now what I want to do is just um, trim away the pieces of this shape I don't want. I could use the scissors tool or in this case what I can see is what I actually want to do is have the circle as my main vector and then subtract the kind of uh, quatrefoil shape from it. So I'm going to select the circle first, shift and select this other shape here. I'm going to come over and choose the option to subtract vectors and you can see once we've taken away that shape from the circle we're left with these little pieces here which is just what I wanted and each of those is a nice closed vector. So a vector layout for the part is almost finished. I'm going to come back to the layer list, click on the down arrow, switch on the foils layer here. I'm going to close this for a second. What I want to do is just make copies of these shapes we've got in the middle here. So I need to select all these vectors. Now it's going to be tricky for me to drag a box around these and just select the ones that I want. So what I can do is um, if I start in the bottom right and drag a box up to the left then I only need to partially cover the vectors that I want to select. So in this case if I click between these two outer circles drag a vector up like this so that it just touches these other vectors here that I want to add to the selection make sure I don't go into the outer circle then they'll all be added to the selection when we drag from the right up to the left we only need to partially cover the objects when we drag from the left down to the right then the objects need to be completely within the box so using those different techniques can help you depending on the geometry you're trying to pick with the mouse with these I'm going to click on this again with the mouse to go into the transform mode and I'm going to um, use the snapping the software has to make copies of these and snap them to these other circles so to make a copy of something when you drag it you hold the control key down on the keyboard the CTRL key so I'm going to hold the control key down keep it pressed I'm going to come over the center of these vectors that we selected here I'm going to click hold the mouse down and I'm going to drag the mouse over until it snaps to the middle of this circle and then I'm going to let go of the mouse button so that's made a copy there because I'm still holding the control key down. Then I can repeat that operation. So I still have the control key held down. I can click in the middle there. can drag it across, make sure it's snapped, let go. And there I've created another copy. And now I can come back over it. We can click on the selection mode arrow to exit the transform mode. Come to the drop down for the layers list. Click on the two layers that are currently invisible to switch those on hit close and there's all the vectors for our um, nice quatrefoil panel that we're going to create toolpaths for in the companion tutorial to this. So let's save this file now so we have a copy of it in the project folder. Go up to file, save as and we'll call this quatrefoil panel vector.crv so if you wanted to you could take a look at that file. 
So before we conclude, let's summarise some of the things we looked at during this example. We started with a blank job setup and we decided that we were going to keep our work organised by creating layers as we went along. This was very helpful because it allowed us to display and undisplay things as we were drawing different parts of the job. Certainly much easier than trying to keep track of everything all at once when you're working on something relatively complex. The layers will also be beneficial to us when we come to creating the toolpaths as you'll see in the next tutorial. We went ahead and used a large variety of the drawing and editing tools that are available in the software. We created lots of simple shapes such as circles and rectangles, used the alignment tools to position these, the array tools to make multiple copies and then we also looked at how we can weld and subtract these simple shapes together to make more complex shapes. We also um, relied heavily on the mirroring tools within this particular example. There's a lot of symmetry here, so the ability to sketch a line and mirror about a line and also to mirror about the centre of the job made it easy to create all the repeating patterns that we've ultimately ended up with. In the companion tutorial to this, we'll show you how you can use a variety of tools, uh, different shapes of tools and different toolpath types in order to create a nice three-dimensional effect panel using these vectors. And that concludes this tutorial.